welcome to QCC's Face the Region. Face the Region is produced by Quinsigamond Community College to assist our region in attaining educational, economic, and personal prosperity. Good afternoon and welcome once again to Face the Region here on Full Service Radio AM 830 WCRN. Zip Zip fell here in the dental clinic at QCC along with Cheryl Ficarilli the Dental Clinic Operations and Facilities Manager to uh, chat a bit about the programs here. And there's quite a few of them. I didn't even realize this existed. This is quite the, quite the equipment center. You know, a lot of people, even the students on campus, have no idea that we have this amazing dental clinic. And because we see patients um, off the street, uh, we are actually a public health facility. So, so you actually, there's actual real patients that yes. uh, the students work on? Yes. Cool, cool. Yes. Wow. Yeah. I would imagine at a uh, cost, it's cost savings in some cases. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's like $25 for every service. Where do I sign up? <laughs> I've got a little work that I need to be done. Hang on here as I drop my, uh, so first of all, uh, just give me a sort of an umbrella overview of the various dental programs they've got here at QCC. Okay, so we have dental hygiene, which is a CODA accredited uh, associate's degree program where the students get licensed to perform hygiene in Massachusetts. We have a dental assisting program, which is a nine month certificate program. Uh, the students are also prepared for licensing uh, for dental assisting. We have dental office management, dental sales, and we have an allied dental health program. Wow, so yeah, that's pretty, it's pretty amazing. Uh, yeah. And uh, we were talking a bit about uh, before we went on the air here. Now, are there state licenses involved with these yes. programs as well? Yes. So when the hygiene students are getting ready to graduate, they challenge a national written board exam, a uh, clinical CDCA exam and a lo local anesthesia exam. All three of those are required to be able to be licensed in Massachusetts. And um, they're prepped thoroughly in these classes here. Absolutely. For that. Abs oh yes, yes, yes. We are a CODA accredited program, which means um, we, we have to abide by certain standards in order to get the students prepared to be in the workplace, properly in the workplace. And CODA is the um, commission You have so on many acronyms in dental. this place. I know, it's crazy, right? <laughs> Nobody knows what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, the Commission on Dental Accreditation. Okay. So we follow very strict guidelines to make sure that our students are well prepared to pass these exams um, when they come up to them. And you know, this is something I didn't even know coming into the program this afternoon. Uh, you know, when I do go to the dentist's office, uh, there's quite a few people as a support staff for the Absolutely. dentist who's working. Absolutely. So explain to me a little bit about the difference between a hygienist and a dental assistant, just for starters, those two. Sure. Uh, so the hygienist um, is prepared and licensed to treat people uh, they do periodontal cleanings and maintenance, fluoride treatments and sealants, and they work directly on the patients under the general supervision of a dentist. An assistant is also licensed by the state of Massachusetts to assist, directly assist the dentist as the dentist is working on the patients. And they also do a little expanded functions. They take x-rays and they, uh, they do impressions and extra functions at the dentist, uh, depending on what they want them to do. Okay, so a, a hygienist would not be giving you a shot of Novocaine or? Oh yes, they're oh. licensed for Novocaine. Oh, they are? Yes. And yes. same it's thing part with of the an assistant as well? No, no. Okay. The I thought it was the other way around. That's interesting. Oh yeah, no, no. The, and that's part of the licensing with the hygienists. They have to pass the local anesthesia exam. The assistants uh, pass a dental national board exam um, to give them licensure to help the dentist or assist the dentist. They do not do Novocaine. Okay. Yeah. So uh, a potential student walks through the door 
uh, looking to get uh, well certified or, or for one of these courses. Yep. Uh, how difficult is it? How much time commitment? How long are the classes? So they're all difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Healthcare is never easy. It's yeah. never easy. Uh, dental assisting is a nine month certificate and then they, they do the licensing. Uh, the dental hygiene is a two-year associate's program, but there's also a lot of prerequisites involved. So most students spend about a year before they get into the hygiene program taking their pre prereqs. Things like biology. Biology, chem, uh, I'm not sure if chemistry, chemistry but they're English, psych, social, anatomy and physiology, things like that. Because once they get into the program, it's very rigorous. And uh, they really need to be concentrating on their dental courses and clinical. They're in clinical two full days a week um, in their second year. Are there cadavers involved? In no, no. <laughs> I was thinking of Live CSI Miami only. or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but they get to practice on their family members, which is really fun. Wow. <laughs> so the family members can actually come in? They do. They, they do. do. The, the freshmen, um, they spend the first half a year, the fall semester, uh, practicing on each other. And then the spring semester, they have to wrangle their family members in here. Wow. And they so, get to work on Dad, them. can I get that new car? <laughs> <Yeah>. Wow, no <laughs> kidding. Holy yeah. mackerel. Um, it's, as you mentioned, it sounds sounds pretty rigorous. It um, is. It is. How many classes a week? How many hours a week are you? Um, you know, I I cannot tell you that. I don't really know. I'm not really involved with the academic right. part, uh, but I do know that they're all counseled to really. Uh, part of the teaching that we do here is really organizational skills. Uh, and they're all counseled really to make sure they put in time commitments. So be between what they're studying, their clinical time, and homework, uh, their homework is expected 30 to 40 hours a week. Wow. So it's rigorous. a full-time job plus what they're here at the school. Um, so they are counseled to try to if they're going to do a part-time job or you know they're counseled to find family members support staff support systems in place wow it's that rigorous. to help yes amazing yeah, yeah it really is well I, I would imagine in the health field there's not a lot of room for error you know no. what I mean? you've <laughs> got to either know your stuff or you don't yeah if you great. if someone's yeah if someone's working on your mouth and with sharp instruments, I, I'm going to say you want them to be exact. And they all have to uh, do so much time and actual application of the skills and the ch you know working Absolutely. on somebody in a chair. So that's there's a, a requisite number of hours that has to has to be completed uh, yes. as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, Great. they absolutely do. Good, good deal. We're talking with Cheryl Ficarilli. I know I'd stumble <laughs> over it. Ficarilli of the Dental Clinic Operations and Facilities. She's the manager here. And we will find out more about all the programs that are available at QCC when Face the Region continues in just a couple of minutes right here on Full Service Radio, AM 830 WCRN. Welcome back to Face the Region here on Full Service Radio, AM 830 WCRN, Zip Zip Fell, uh, here in the dental clinic at QCC along with Cheryl Ficarilli, the <laughs> dental clinic operations and facilities manager, uh, talking about the various courses that are offered. And, uh, Kind of, kind of came as a surprise to me to see such a layout of a really state-of-the-art equipment you've we, got here. Uh, we are very lucky, actually. We have an amazing clinic. We have 20 chairs. We have an entire radiology area. Uh, we recently, within the last, uh, I'm going to say, three or four years, um, got a beautiful panoramic x-ray machine, very high-end, state-of-the-art. The, the one that does the 360? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah it's beautiful. And uh, yeah, we're very fortunate. We have a really, really good place for the students to learn. Now, so how does that work? So people can literally come in off the street for basic dental services, or do they run yes. the gamut? It, no, it's just hygiene services. Oh, hygiene, okay. So we, they have to make an appointment, um, we have, they come in, they, they have to commit because it's a school. Each appointment is three hours long. 
and they have to commit to three three-hour appointments. But they're not being worked on all that time because the students have to do a section and then they stop and they have to be checked by the, the faculty. And then we have a dentist, he has to check certain things. So it takes a little longer because it's a learning process. Right, right. Right. But we offer free services to veterans. So you are like a cadaver except you're breathing. <laughs> <laughs> that's a terrible joke. <laughs> but I got gotcha. you. Yeah, so in other yeah. words, that's, that's the trade-off. Yes. For the low cost yes. of the cleaning is to, yeah. I would imagine your teeth are pretty sparkling when you leave here, especially oh. you get, you know, not much plaque left. When we get patients that come in here, um, generally they always come back. <laughs> they love us. They can't believe how thorough the treatment has been. Right. And uh, we have a book of people trying to get in here. We, they do. They love us. They just love us. And, and the, the, and the students. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, sure. and the fees are so inexpensive. You know, for a senior, it's twenty dollars for cleaning, X-rays, and a fluoride treatment and a full assessment. I mean, Jeez, my where can you get that? Even twenty bucks on my <laughs> cleaning with my high-end insurance. Exactly. That's great. That's really terrific. And I would imagine the students. I mean, that really is pre prepping you for real world Absolutely. employment. Absolutely. Absolutely, yes. So speaking of which, uh, we were talking a couple of minutes ago off, off the air about the opportunities in the field. I would yes. imagine that uh, even with the advent of technology, there still must be a yes. lot of opportunities. Uh, so for the dental assisting particularly is exploding right now. They are, they're hired generally before they leave here. Full-time positions are crazy. We can't turn out enough to fill the positions. I was talking to the program director and uh, she was telling me she gets calls, several calls a week. Uh, dental hygiene uh, is predicted, uh, both dental assisting and dental hygiene by the statistics labor board um, to be double digits increase in need in the next 10 years, over the next 10 years. Right, and you mentioned, you were talking also about uh, something that's, I guess, up in front of the state legislature. A, yes. A, a different job, occupation, I guess you would call it. Right. Dental therapist. Tell us a bit about that. What's that all about? So the dental therapist is a, would be a hygienist who gets further education uh, to do basic dental work. Uh, they would do basic dental um, fillings, basic extractions. Uh, some basic emergency procedures so they can actually go out into the underserved populations and perform work where the dentist can't really, you know, they don't have time to go out there because they're in their offices. Almost like a so, paramedic or EMT except in the dental field? Would that be a right way to make the analogy? I'm, I'm going to say, yeah, Just it's kind from, of like that, yes. Right. And a few states have adopted it. Um, our program director went and saw a program that's currently being done in the Midwest. It's very successful. It's helping a ton of people who can't really get treatment. And uh, so we're trying. We're trying to get it through the legislature now. Right. And uh, we'll see how it goes. That's great. <laughs> um, when you talk about op opportunities in the field, um, pretty good salaries? Starting salaries very, out of the box? Very good salaries. Um, I think the uh, the hygienists are coming out making thirty-five to forty dollars an hour to start. Wow! And the assistants, I was told, uh, the average pay I believe is somewhere between seventeen and twenty-three dollars an hour, depending on where they're being hired. Right. So the hygienist yes. actually is a, a higher pay scale. That's interesting. Well. Uh, it, um, it's a high p higher pay scale because they're doing direct patient care themselves. They're fully licensed. Even though they're under the general supervision of a dentist, right. uh, they're in there treating the patients. You know, they have their own, you know, malpractice and things like that. And it's an associate degree and a, a much bigger license. Yeah, so from assistant to actual in contact with the patient, that's the big difference, the big threshold of yes. liability and things like that. Yes. Sure, yes. sure. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, the economic aspect of coming to QCC for those kind of courses as opposed to staying 
going to a Tufts or one of the, the bigger schools, oh. I would imagine it's <laughs> almost, much almost incomparable, really. It's, yeah. it's much different. Oh, yes. Uh, it's much less expensive to come here. Uh, there's tons of financial aid to help the students. Uh, there's, um, I mean, our program, relative to a regular community um, college program, is more expensive because there's a lot of more expenses. They're buying instruments and uniforms and things, and they're paying for their licensing exams. But comparable to, say, going to Tufts or one of the bigger colleges, the cost is, you know, a percent. Well, yeah, and you I would know, imagine you have to smaller percentage. you'd have to offset some of the cost too here with the, with the real laboratory and, and the amount of chairs. Yeah, uh, it, uh, it's, as well. And we run um, our program. Um, the state requires a, a one to six ratio, or I think it's one to might be one to five now, um, with students to faculty. And we run our clinic every four students we have faculty. So we run a one to four ratio, so it is a little bit more expensive for us, but we find that we have a lot higher rate of students that pass their board exams. You know, and that is a recurring theme I have discovered on this program here at QCC about the smaller class sizes. And in this case, it's a legality thing with the state, but just the amount of attention students get from the, in, the individual pro professors in their individual courses seems to really make a huge difference Yes. Um, yes. in the success rate of the uh, kids going to school and, and non-traditional students. I don't want to yeah. leave them out as well. Um, so, so again, if, if talking directly to somebody who's thinking about coming into this field, um, you really have to be focused and, and yes. ready to go to work and it's not something, it's not a liberal arts kind of deal. No, 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 no. It's very focused, it's very time consuming, it's very exacting. You really have to want it. It's, uh, you know, we do typically at the beginning of the semester, you know, we take in so many students and we typically lose a couple because someone says, oh, I didn't know I was going to have to touch people, you know. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> <laughs> and even though when they're told, I they you know, they go through orientation. I found <laughs> app just do the work of that iPhone app. <laughs> Too funny. So I mean that, and that really happens. <laughs> Jeez, I bet. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. I bet it does. But yeah. the hands-on experience that that's that's really fantastic. It, it's amazing, and we do a couple things that a lot of schools don't do. We offer. Um, Every Friday, we have open labs. We hire a faculty to come in here and work one-on-one -on -one with the students, whatever their problems are, um, it, so that they can get the extra, the extra time in, which kind of cuts us a little above the rest because a lot of programs don't do that. Right, and that's another thing I often hear about, how, uh, how accessible the faculty is and how committed yes. they are to spending the extra time with folks who are struggling. Yes. So it's, it's a great thing. We're yeah. chatting with Cheryl Ficarilli, got it right that time, <laughs> here at the Dental Clinic uh, on Face the Region here on AMA 30 WCRN. We'll be back with our final segment in just a couple of minutes. Welcome back once again to Face the Region here on Full Service Radio, AMA 30 WCRN. I'm Zip Zipfell, your host, along with Cheryl Ficarilli of the uh, dental clinic. She's the dental clinic operations and facilities manager here at QCC, which is really a state-of-the-art facility uh, right here on the campus of QCC. Uh, we've talked uh, about a lot of different things in this half hour so far uh, about the various courses. One thing we didn't touch on though was office management, the office management aspect, the administrative aspect of the dental industry. I would imagine yes. along with the growth in the other aspects that's th the same too. Oh absolutely and you know and it's there's so many pieces to the office management uh, running the office that you really do need someone that's in charge. There's, uh, aside from scheduling, dealing with patients and scheduling, there's billing, direct billing, insurance billing is a whole job in itself. Uh, accounts receivable, obviously, you want yeah. your money. Um, and, um, and taking care of the staff making sure that you know all the staff are taken care of. So there is a lot to do with it. And you have to have someone that's watching your HIPAA compliance, your CDC compliance, and OSHA. Right. 
Again, so, there you go with those lot. acronyms. I know, sorry. Uh, but uh, no, I mean, with healthcare, and that's the amount of litigation and, and liability you have in Huge. any health field. Is, and that's really one of the reasons why healthcare costs are so high. Um, with the office management, now are there softwares and uh, do you get that type of training too, the computer aspect of it? Are there, yes. you know, is that yes. a, a big part of it? There's several soft, different types of dental software out there. Um, we use one particular program, EagleSoft, but as the students are out, if they're out into the different dental offices, they have access to the other programs that are used out there. We currently use EagleSoft, which is one of the bigger programs. There's EagleSoft and Dentrix. You can only really have one um, that you're using, and that's what we're training our students on. Great. Great. Yep. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask, and we were chatting, chatting about this during the break, um, you know, the real world aspect of running a real dental clinic uh, with real patients and, and students working on them. Uh, so it's over, there's always a dentist on the premises, is that correct? correct? At correct. all times that they're, they're practicing. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a requirement. And as far as, uh, I mean, are there ever occasion, I mean, medical emergencies arise, is that something that you guys occasionally deal with here? We do, we right. do. Uh, sometimes the students uh, in reviewing the health history and doing their assessments, sometimes they will find something going on with a patient that they didn't know they had. Uh, we have had occasion where we've had to call the paramedics and have a, a patient escorted out. Uh, Everybody's lived through it, just just to let everybody know. <laughs> but we're highly trained. We run a lot of medical emergency drills here in the clinic, both with faculty and with the students. Uh, and it's really amazing to see when something does happen, it's really amazing to see them come together and know that they can do this, especially when they get out into private practice. I was just going to say, that really is the most important experience you can really go through, is the real world stuff. That Absolutely. You just are not going to get out of a textbook or a lecture, or you know, watching a YouTube do-it-yourself <laughs> extraction video, if there's such a thing. Absolutely. Um, so let's kind of go back and sort of review the whole thing, uh, uh, all the programs. So okay. in a nutshell. Okay, dental hygiene, CODA accredited associate program, licensed to do um, cleanings, perio maintenance, patient education. There's dental assisting, which is a certificate program, but also CODA accredited and licensed in the state of Massachusetts to assist the dentist. We have the uh, dental medical office manager dental um, sales, and uh, the Allied Dental Health Program. Okay, we didn't talk about dental sales. Now, is that, uh, what, what's that about? Um, it's just basically, um, if you are interested in sales, you go through this program and you would get hired by a company that uh, supplies all the dental products, the, all this equipment that you're looking at, uh, and they go to the various offices and clinics and things like that. Very specialized to inventory. All yeah. dental related. Right. Yes. So a very valuable th thing to have in your toolkit of <laughs> sales as well. Um, as far as the, the folks who have, let me ask you this. Okay. Uh, for those students who really want to go on and become a dentist. Yes. Is, is this a, are there preparation, you know, is that a preparation type? Uh, program here that that would allow that or is that uh, uh, we have we have had students that have gone on to dental school uh, a lot of the dental schools are very difficult to get into or, or they have a lot of wait lists like medical schools yeah, yes yes so if you came here you could uh, do the hygiene program you'd have a you'd have your basics out of the way and um, still practice hygiene part-time while you're in dental school, make decent money, uh, and um, it does help you get your foot in the door. I, I'm going to say it does help you get your foot in the door. But as far as actual uh, transfer credits and... Oh, yes. And, oh, yes. We have a uh, Vermont, University of Vermont, Vermont Tech... Um, BM Dental, yeah, that sounds... We have a direct um, transfer program with them. 
I'm not sure if that's the dental school, but I think so. And a lot of our, our credits, because we're CODA accredited, we, our credits transfer into other credited schools. That's why we do that. And it, once, you, once you have this type of training and, and license, yes. you can kind of really write your own ticket and pretty much go wherever, you know. I started as a dental assistant. I became a hygienist. And now I'm the fix-it person for this whole clinic. <laughs> <laughs> the go-to person. The go-to person. So, yes, you can. There's a lot of other opportunities. Um, a lot of hygienists do go into the dental sales. Uh, and you can. You can go. You can teach. If you go from hygiene, which is an associate's, and you get a bachelor's, you can teach in the clinic. So while the students are clinical, you can come in and teach during the clinic time. Um, and then if you want to go on for your master's, obviously you can teach hygiene students at the college level. But right. yeah, you can just keep going. That's fantastic. That's great. Um, and if somebody's watching and, or listening uh, and is interested, uh, do you have open houses or how would they find out more information and get involved? So you would call the school and you want to talk to the program secretary, um, Denise Urella and uh, you would call 508-854-4265. Uh, and that would bring you directly to the program secretary who would direct you wherever you need to go based on your needs. And if you have a really bad toothache right now and you don't have... <laughs> <laughs> but there, there's we a waiting list for the, you. for the well for the dental clinic though there is a wait list aren't there? correct um, some of the dental it's not clinics a we refer for here yeah there's a wait list yeah but if you have a toothache and you call us we're gonna refer you elsewhere we're only gonna clean your teeth we can't fix your toothache <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cheryl uh, it's been a real pleasure talking to you for this uh, past half hour and uh, continued success with the program. It's really fantastic. Honestly, Thank you. I've been it up is and amazing. down the hallway here and never stuck my head in. I never expected to see this layout. It's very impressive indeed. Thank you. There Thank you, you go. Thank you very much. That'll do it for this edition of uh, Face the Region, uh, the QCC's Face the Region here on Full Service Radio, AM 830 WCRN. Have a great week and we will talk to you next week. This has been Quinsigaman Community College's Face the Region. Join us again next weekend on AM 830 WCRN.